and welcome to another episode of Zeno's Life. I'm your host, Aishwarya, and today we'll be discussing transport and animals. And we have Afreen along with us. Over to you, Afreen. Hello. Like Aishwarya said, today we're doing IGCC Biology Chapter 9, that is transport and animals, or humans. We're mostly talking about humans here. So the first part is circulatory systems. Uh, this is a short one. The syllabus needs you to know what's a circulatory system, the parts of it, and then you need to know about single and double circulation and the advantages of double circulation. So first of all, the circul circulatory system is a system of blood vessels with a pump and valves to ensure one-way flow of blood. So the main purpose here of all the parts here is that blood is transported and it's only being transported in one direction. So there's different mechanisms involved, like the vessels are equipped with valves and there's high pressure movement in some areas just to ensure there's no backflow of blood. There's just movement of blood in one way. This is something you should memorize. You should know. You should be able to answer whenever you should be able to think of it right away when someone asks you. Yeah, that's that. Now we'll look at the single and double circulatory systems. So single circulatory systems are found in fishes. So they have two heart chambers. We have four heart chambers. So that we're, we'll look at the differences later. So, but we're looking at the fish, the single circulatory system right now. The, it involves two heart chambers and the blood absorbs oxygen in the gills. And it's released in body cells and then back to the heart. So it's really just taking one circuit from the heart, the body, and then it's back to the heart. And um, in between the uh, circuit, it makes a pit stop to the gills to absorb oxygen, you know, just doing the gas exchange stuff and then transporting oxygen throughout the body and it's back to the blood, uh, back to the heart, back to the gills and again to the body. It's really simple. It's um, it's one complete circuit, uh, circuit one, one round to complete one circuit and that's about that. The double circulatory system, it c consists of four heart chambers the, bl the blood passes through the heart twice in one circuit. The, the blood is oxygenated in the lungs and then it's, it goes back to the heart from which it goes to the body. From the ba body, it's back to the heart. So it's really like a crisscross. If you imagine it in a eight, it moves in the shape of an eight. So it, it's kind of like that. If you see a diagram later, that's going to illustrate that. Now, you need to know that the double circulatory system works more efficiently. It works better than the single circulatory system. <clears throat> Why? Because the double circulatory system delivers <clears throat> greater blood flow rate to tissues <clears throat> around the body as the heart pumps the oxygenated blood to it from the lungs. So in a nutshell, this, the, the double circulatory system allows for a faster system. It allows for more efficiency, less uh, wastage, and it's really just faster. That's why it's important. That's why it's better. <clears throat> but the single circulatory system works for fishes. Double circulatory system works for us. It's better for us. That was the first part. Very simple, very short, simple. Now we come to the second part of this chapter. It's about the heart. The syllabus wants you to know, you need to be able to identify the different parts of the heart. You need to be able to state the various functions of the heart. You need to know the different diseases of uh, affecting the heart. You need to know how to stay, uh, how to keep your heart healthy. And yeah, that's basically it. You need to know about the various bus vessels. Uh, no, actually not here, that's later. <clears throat> oh, you need to know the difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And yeah, the importance of different parts of the heart. Okay, first of all, we start with the structure of the heart. Really the basic place to start. So take a good look at it. <clears throat> so we have, you'll notice the four main chambers right away. They're the, the ones in the center of the heart in purple. <clears throat> so the light purple parts are the atrium and then atria and then the uh, darker purple are the ventricles. You'll learn more about it in detail right about now. So the heart is divided into two main parts. There's the right side of the heart and there's the left side of the heart. <clears throat> now, when you're looking at the diagram of the heart in a paper, you have to notice, you have to make, uh, take note that your right side is not the same as the right side on the paper. If you, even if you look at this diagram right here, the right atrium corresponds to your left side 
and the left atrium corresponds to your right side. So this is something you need to make note of. Even when you're labeling diagrams, this is something you have to be careful about because it's a common mistake and it's a critical mistake. The examiner cannot overlook it. You have, you will lose marks if you make that mistake. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so first of all, you've got the right atrium. Right atrium, it collects deoxygenated blood. From, so the blood travels through the body. It loses its oxygen to the cells. It becomes deoxygenated and it's pumped into the right atrium. Deoxygenated blood is basically blood void of any oxygen or with very little oxygen. The concentration of carbon dioxide is way higher than it was when it left the heart to the body. So when it's returning to the heart, it's deoxygenated and it enters the right atrium. The right atrium then pumps it, pumps this deoxygenated blood to the right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps this deoxygenated blood to the lungs. At the lungs, it becomes oxygenated. What happens here is it basically drops off the carbon dioxide, collects more oxygen, and then from the right eight, uh, from the lungs, it comes back to the heart. We'll look at that later. So the next part is septum. Septum is basically a wall that separates the left side and the right side of the heart. And the main very, very important function of the septum is to prevent oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood from mixing. The next one is pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. So let's go back to where we left off. The blood gets oxygenated at the lungs and then it comes back to the heart via the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. The blood, the freshly oxygenated blood enters the heart uh, to the left atrium. Left atrium co collects oxygenated blood and it's pumped into the left ventricle. Now the left ventricle pumps the blood to the whole body via the aorta. Now, if you notice, left ventricle, uh, it's pumping blood to the whole body. This is a very large uh, area to cover. So the blood needs to be in extremely high pressure for which the walls at the left ventricle is the thickest in the entirety of the heart. If you look at this diagram, if you look at the left ventricle, the wall surrounding the left ventricle is the thickest com relative uh, to the entire heart. This is because the pressure here is very, very high. And if the walls were thick, there um, could be a rupture and you would be left with a leaky heart. So that's why the wall needs to be thick to withstand the pressure that's required to pump the blood into the entire, to the entire body. Now, the, this blood is pumped via the aorta. Aorta is a blood vessel. Uh, a blood vessel. It's an artery. We'll look at that later. So we'll, let's recap what we've looked at so far. This is the right atrium. Blood, deoxygenated blood, just fine. The in, inferior vena cava is the blood vessel you can see right next to the right ventricle. This connects the uh, deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. The right atrium collects the deoxygenated blood. Now here's the function of the atrium, atria. It collects blood, whether it be deoxygenated or oxygenated. The right atrium co collects deoxygenated blood while the left atrium collects oxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood from the body enters the right atrium and then it's pumped to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it goes to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. The blood vessels related to the lungs are called pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. Deoxygenated blood entering the lungs is travels via the pulmonary artery. It gets oxygenated, the blood gets oxygenated at the lungs and then it, the blood enters the left atrium via the pulmonary vein. From the left atria, atrium, it's plump, pumped into the left ventricle uh, where it is pumped throughout to the whole entire body via the aorta. So let's look at the aorta. Aorta is an artery which carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the rest of the body. And yeah, that's that. Now we look at the valves, like I mentioned already. The entirety of circulatory system is equipped with multiple valves, uh, valves to prevent backflow of blood. So there, first of all, there's the bicuspid and the tricuspid valve, valves. The one separate, the valve separating the right and the left 
ventricle is called the tricuspid valve. And the valve separating the left and the uh, the left ventricle and the left atrium is called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. Uh, although for IGC biology, you, you use this, you use the term bi, uh, bicuspid. So yeah, right side tricuspid, left side bicuspid. You need to know this. You will lose marks if you fail to mention it when you're labeling the diagrams or when you're mentioning the functions of the heart, parts of the heart. But yes. Uh, the function of the bicuspid and tricuspid valve, it's to prevent backflow of blood into the atria when the ventricles contract. So the ventricles contract to, to pump blood either to the heart or the body. So to prevent this blood from going back to the atria, there are the atrioventricular valves. The atrioventricular valves are nothing but the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves. Once again, tricuspid, right side of the heart, bicuspid, left side of the heart very very critical information you cannot mix that up okay then we have the pulmonary and the aortic valves this is kind of self-explanatory the pulmonary valve it, it connects is it sits in between the pulmonary vein uh, pulmonary artery and the right ventricle and the aortic valve sits in between the aorta and the left ventricle and once again it's similar it's to the purpose of these valves is to prevent backflow of blood from the arteries into the ventricles. So when the arteries contract, the blood cannot go back to the ventricles. Uh, it, it's really, once again, reinforce in your head, valves are, pre are present to prevent backflow of blood. Pulmonary and aortic valves are present uh, at the veins and the arteries at the, that are specific to the names. These are known as semilunar valves when you're talking in general. However, when you're going particular, you need to know the pulmonary and aortic valves, tricuspid and bicuspid valves. And that's the heart structure. This is an image, the diagram. You need to know the parts by heart, <laughs> by heart. But yes, it's very important. And yeah, you will be asked to label this. You may, you may, be, asked, you may be given the diagram. They may, they may give you like the letters. So A, B, C, D, A, F, G. What's letter, what's, which part of the heart is letter F? And what is the function of this part? Something like that. The questions will come like that. It could be six marks, eight marks. It's a big question. The question usually comes in a table form and it's a paper four question. Very, 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 very common. And it's a definite question in paper two. And yeah. Okay, so now the ECG trace. So the ECG is basically a method for monitoring heart activity. So first of all, physical activity makes the heart beat more quickly and more deeply because physical activity causes uh, oxygen to be used up more quickly. So oxygen needs to be transported to the cells more quickly to um, meet that demand, that increased demand. So blood is circulated more quickly, more uh, frequently. And that's that. That's why you breathe more fast, uh, breathe more deeply and more quickly when you have when you have just completed or when you are in between a physical activity. Now, the electrical activity of the heart can be monitored by uh, the electrocardiogram, pulse rate, and listening uh, to the sound of the valves closing. So there are three main methods of me monitoring heart activity: electrocardiogram, that's ECG. There's pulse rate and you can listen to the sounds of the valves closing and opening. And yeah, there's that. This is it's very simple. You don't need to know anything specific about the ECG trace, but you need to know that there are three main methods of monitoring heart activity. There's ECG, pulse rate, and listening to the sound of the heart, so the heart valves opening and closing, that's it. And you need to know physical activity causes your heart to beat faster because there's a deficiency of oxygen as it's being used up more quickly. Now we look at heart diseases. So heart diseases are known as coronary heart diseases. Coronary artery are basically arteries that are found on the heart that, that supply oxygen to the heart muscles. So coronary artery becomes blocked when you eat an excess of oils, when you have a poor lifestyle. It could also be genetic. It could be caused by stress, by smoking, uh, poor lifestyle. All of these causes kind of build up to coronary, arter coronary heart diseases. So coronary heart disease, coronary arteries become blocked. <clears throat> so blood supply to the heart is blocked, to the heart muscles. Now, these heart muscles are deprived of oxygen and glucose when the vessels are blocked. 
and poisonous waste such as lactic acid did carbon dioxide build up. So part of the heart muscle stops con contracting. When that happens, a heart attack happens and you know, heart attacks can be very dangerous unless it's treated immediately. Um, it can be prevented, heart, coronary heart diseases can be prevented by not smoking, avoiding fatty foods and exercising regularly, overall just maintaining a healthy, a good lifestyle, adaptive lifestyle. There are uh, several surgeries, several procedures that can be carried out to a patient suffering from coronary heart diseases. First of all, if there's heart, uh, a heart attack, that can be uh, helped with an aspirin and there's surgery. The surgery involves stents, angioplasty and bypass. These are three different types of surgeries. And yeah, you not, don't really need to know the details of the surgery, but it would help if you did. And that's that. Now we will look at blood vessels. Okay, so the syllabus needs you to know that there are three different types of blood vessels found in uh, humans. You need to know the functions and then you need to know those blood vessels that are specific to spe some organs like liver, heart, kidneys and lungs. And yeah, that's that. So first of all, there are three main blood vessels. Like I said, there's the artery, there's the vein and the capillary. I've been using these words but I didn't really explain what they were. Let's look at them now. Artery. So the function of the artery is to transport high pressure blood away from the heart. Always remember, artery carries oxygenated blood with one exception, the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery carries blood from the right ventricle to the lungs and the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood. That's the only exception. Otherwise, every single artery in the body carries oxygenated blood. The structure of the artery is such that elastic walls expand and rela relax as blood is forced out. So this is what this is what causes the pulse. If you feel it here, feel here, you can feel your pulse. What's happening here is that the walls of the artery is elastic. So when blood is forced through, it kind of like expands and it comes back. It relaxes a little bit like peristalsis. If you remember from the previous chapters. Uh, yeah, that's what's happening here. And arteries have thick walls. Like I said, high pressure. To withstand the pressure, you need thick walls. And that's that. Okay. Vein. Vein carries deoxygenated blood. Vein carries deoxygenated blood with one exception, the pulmonary vein. So the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the, from the lungs to the left atrium. And it carries oxygenated blood. So there are two exceptions to the artery and the vein rule, the pulmonary vein and the pulmonary artery. So whatever the rule is, it's just opposite for that. Artery carries oxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary artery, which carries deoxygenated blood. And then vein carries deoxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary vein, which carries oxygenated blood. Um, function of the vein is to carry low, trans low pressure blood to the heart. Artery carries blood away from the heart, Always, no exceptions. Artery carries blood away from the heart. Vein carries blood to the heart. Always, no exception. No exception to this rule. <clears throat> the structure of the vein, valves, veins have valves to prevent backflow. Since the bl blood is not moving in high pressure here, there's a chance of back backflow. And it's, this is prevented by valves, so there's no backflow. And blood is at low pressure, so uh, the blood is moved by the nearby muscles, squeezing the veins and helping the push the blood to the heart and veins have a large diameter and thin walls to reduce resistance to the flow of blood because it's already moved a lot so it's difficult to maintain a high pressure which is the main reason why there's low pressure in the veins okay now there's the capillary capillary is sort of different to the arteries and the veins there's um capillary is basically used for diffusion of gases and oxygen they're found throughout your body where the spaces are too small to have arteries and veins. So your eyes uh, inside your lungs where gas exchange occurs, these are the places where you'll find capillaries. Capillaries allow substances to diffuse into cells. The structure of capillary is such that it's one cell thick to allow for easy diffusion. So if you remember from previous chapters, the thinner the surface, the easier the diffusion is, and it's highly branched. So there's a large surface area, once again, efficient uh, in, for, for diffusion. 
and then capillary beds constantly sup uh, is supplied with fresh blood so so there's a very constant re uh, re replenishment of gases so diffusion occurs regularly it happens all the time and it's encouraged by the conditions around and that's the blood vessels okay so this is something important so you've got the heart you've got the four main chambers of the heart ra is the right atrium la is the left atrium rv is the right ventricle and lv is the left ventricle so blood moves to the lungs by the pulmonary artery from the lungs, the blood goes back to the left atrium uh, via the pulmonary vein. And then blood leaves the heart from the left ventricle via the aorta. And then, like I said, you need to know the blood vessels specific to some of the organs. So that's what we're looking at here. So blood is, oxygenated blood is transported to the liver via the hepatic artery and then the blood is used up and it becomes deoxygenated and this deoxygenated blood goes back to the heart to the right atrium via the hepatic vein um, it enters the right atrium via the vena cava when when, <clears throat> when we look at the kidneys oxygenated blood goes to the kidneys via the renal artery and it, the deoxygenated blood leaves the kidneys via the renal artery and it enters the heart to the right atrium via the vena cava and obviously the blood goes to other parts too, other parts of the bodies, other organs, but you do not need to know the specifics about that. These are the specifics you need to know. The specific arteries and veins that you need to know are the pulmonary veins and artery, hepatic artery and veins, and renal artery and veins. So this is what the text says, exactly what I said. Renal vein and artery carry blood to and away from the heart kidneys, hepatic and artery, hepatic vein and artery carry blood to and away from the liver, Pulmonary vein and artery carry blood to and away from the lungs. Vena cava carries deoxygenated blood to the heart. Aorta carries oxygenated blood to the body, away from the heart. <clears throat> and there's that. So there, the, this is part four, I think. Blood. So we're going to discuss what blood is like, what the blood is made of. Uh, we need to, you need to be able to discuss, uh, you need to be able to identify different components of the blood from diagrams. You need to know the functions of these separate parts of the components of the blood and some processes carried out by these parts so let's dive in <clears throat> okay like i said first of all you need to know the blood components so first and compo uh, first and foremost there is the red blood cells red blood cells uh, it's composed of hemoglobin and it transports oxygen it's a biconcave shape that is somewhat hollowish in the middle to allow space for oxygen it has no nucleus it's flat it's a disc shape biconcave disc shape that's an important part you need to be able to know the structure and then there's the white blood cells white blood cells carry out phagocytosis and antibody formation so it's usually it's just immunity immunity purposes that's why white blood cells are pr uh, uh, present in your blood and then there's platelets platelets help in clotting Clotting prevents loss of blood when there's a cut. <clears throat> and there's plasma. Plasma is basically a liquid composed of many nutrients, so water, and it transports blood cells, ions, nutrients, hormones, carbon dioxide, urea, plasma protein. So that's what gives the blood its liquid property. It's the plasma. Everything else is just the components inside the plasma. Yeah, the plasma is really what's allowing everything to be transported throughout the body. And even when you eat food and it's digested, the nutrients from the food is, the soluble ones are dissolved in your blood in the plasma and it's transported throughout your body and used up by the cells as it's needed. Okay, now we're looking at the functions. We already looked at the basics of it. Now we're looking at detail. Red blood cell, it transports oxygen. There's nothing you need to know about that. You, what's important about red blood cell is the function. Uh, is the structure so what i said is important it's a biconcave dish shape doesn't have nucleus so there's large surface area for oxygen to be carried carries oxygen that's it white blood cells carry out phag phagocytosis and antibody antibody production so this is kind of self-explanatory and we will look into these processes more into detail in the next chapter that's immunity and diseases so we'll leave it at here for now 
Platelets help in clotting, that's blood clotting. Clotting prevents blood loss and the entry of pathogens by creating this um, barrier between the, uh, the external conditions and the internal parts of your body. So you need to know the details about this. So there's fibrinogen, it's inactin, inactive, and it is converted to fibrin. So basically it's activated by uh, activators, and then it forms a mesh to trap red blood cells so that it does not escape, which then dries out to form a scab. So that's what's clotting, that's what's happening here. There's calcium ions present here. So that's helping in the process. And then there's plasma, like I said, plasma's transporting different kinds of nutrients, hormones, urea, carbon dioxide throughout your body. It's collecting waste products and then it's disposing them at the kidneys. It's um, transporting nutrients and oxygen to your cells so that it can be used in respiration. So that's the purpose of the plasma. Plasma is what's doing the main transporting here. That's what gives the blood its liquid property. And then there's lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are white blood cells and they're used in antibody production. And phagocytes, also white blood cells, they're used for engulfing pathogen by phagocytosis. So these processes, like I said, we will look into more, we will look more into detail in, in the next chapter. But for now, that's all you need to know. And that's chapter nine. The IGC biology will look at some questions. So this is October, November 2017. What happens as the blood flows from the atria into the ventricles of the heart? So <clears throat> from atria to the ventricles of the heart. So when the blood is moving to the from the atria, the atrioventricular valves should open so that obviously because the movement is from the atria to the ventricles, so that the valves need to be open, open to allow the movement. So the options are C or D because those are the only open options. Now we go to the muscle wall of the atria. They need to be contracted. Both of them are contract. Okay, so we still haven't narrowed it down. Muscle walls of the ventricle has to relax because if atria is contracting, ventricles have to relax. So it's option D. And semilunar valves have to be closed so that to prevent backflow of blood. <clears throat> That's their only purpose. So it's option D. Okay, October, November, 2017. Question 18. The diagram shows cross-section through a human blood vessel. Okay, the wall is elastic and fibrous connective tissue, and there's a muscle layer. The diameter is small, the walls are thick, so that's the um, specific specification of an artery. So it's nothing but an artery. <clears throat> okay, this is February, March 2018. What is an advantage of a double circulatory system in mammals? Blood can flow down the body on the left and up down on the right. Blood can flow more slowly along the circulatory system. That's not ideal. Blood pressure stays the same throughout the circulatory system. Also not ideal because in some places we need higher blood pressure and in some places we need lower blood pressure. And oxygenated and deoxygenated blood are kept separate. So yes, that's the one that makes sense. So that's what we'll go for. That's the correct answer. And yeah, that's IGCC Biology Chapter 9 transport in animals. Thank you so much, Afreen, for your time. And we hope you enjoyed this informative session. Our social media handles will pop up on the next slide, so you can follow them. Thank you so much.